Hi everyone, my name is Troy Drill. I'm the Executive Director and Inuduistok for the Mi'kmaq Maoyomi Secretariat. The Secretariat represents three Mi'kmaq communities in Gespegawagi, Gespeg, Geskebegiak, and Listiguj. Today I'm here to share with you information on a specific topic. The topic we're going to talk about today is the Framework Agreement. The Framework Agreement is one of the key subject matters that the Mi'kmaq are deliberating now under the Comprehensive Claim Process. The Comprehensive Claim Process is a process that the Mi'kmaq have engaged with, uh, including the Government of Canada and the Government of Quebec. The purpose the Mi'kmaq have engaged into the uh, Comprehensive Claim Process with the uh, Governments of Quebec and Canada is to be able to develop their nation, to be able to make their own decisions, become a self-determining people, and to be able to grow their economies, grow their communities, provide education for their own people in their own languages, and other things that the Mi'kmaq would do as part of a nation-building exercise. Under the comprehensive claim process, there are six steps. Today, again, we're going to focus on the framework agreement, but I'll start off by talking about the statement of claim for a short little bit of time. The statement of claim was something that the Mi'kmaq deposited in October 2007. It was research from 2000 and on, and it provides information about the use and occupancy about the Mi'kmaq in Gespegawagi, primarily the Quebec portions of uh, Gespegawagi. The next stage of the comprehensive claim process was the signing of the Nigani Dazawal Dazigal Il Sudahan, or the NI. The NI was the thinking before the decision. It was the thinking about the Mi'kmaq, are they going to enter the claim, comprehensive claim process and move forward with this, or not? The signing of the NI outlined or provided the Mi'kmaq with a safe space in order to talk to Quebec and Canada about the claims process, provide information to Quebec and Canada about the claim, and in order to uh, start thinking about the framework agreement, which is what we're talking about here today. The stage after the framework agreement is the agreement in principle, followed by the final agreement and perhaps a treaty. These are stages that would have to be talked about or further discussed in the future, um, but it's not something that everyone has agreed to at this point. Right now, we're primarily concerned about the framework agreement and what we're going to talk about here today. Since the signing of the Nigani Dazawal Dazigal Il Sudahan in 2008, the Mi'kmaq have been working to conclude a framework agreement. So imagine a picture inside of a frame. The frame outlines the picture or provides a border for the picture. The framework agreement in this case frames the discussions the Mi'kmaq will be having with the federal government and the Quebec government. Basically, the framework agreement outlines procedures for conducting negotiations, how the topics will be discussed, and what topics will be negotiated in the future. A framework agreement is developed during the first stage of official negotiations. During this stage, the parties decide on the topics that will be resolved in future negotiations. The topics that have been included in the framework agreement now include culture and heritage, natural resources, environmental assessment and protection, parks and other protected areas, self-government, taxation, and economic measures. In order for the Migwe Mawiomi Secretariat to have an understanding of community members' interests, we went out to the communities during the months of July to December in 2010. The community sessions were designed to discuss framework agreement topics by posing a number of questions. What do the framework agreement topic areas mean to you, your family, and your communities? What do you want to see in Gisbegawagi in five years and 25 years down the road? Through these workshops, the community's aspirations and the topic areas which appear in the framework agreement were validated. The list of topic areas along with the priority areas that the community members identified was then presented to the leadership of the three communities and also shared with the Imkinigan Elder Circle. It is only after a framework agreement is signed with governments of Quebec and Canada that the Mi'kmaq will be entering into substantive negotiations with their governments. It's only after a framework agreement that official negotiations take place. So after the framework agreement has been agreed to by the three communities, shared with the communities, and signed that uh, we're going to be going into a new phase. It's going to be an official phase where the Mi'kmaq will be able to uh, start having an agreement where they would be able to access their resources, start talking about self-governing initiatives, and start the process really rolling forward in the comprehensive claim process. 
All this work leading up to the uh, framework agreement, including the signing of the other documents and the research that was uh, taking place, really leads us up to this point that we're at right now. It's a very critical point for the Mi'kmaq going forward to think about signing a framework agreement. The draft framework agreement, with all its components, be shared with the community members through a number of venues. At community workshops and information sessions, at the annual General Assembly, and through the internet, through the uh, website www.migmaway.ca, and through other electronic means. Again, I want to reiterate, the framework agreement is an agreement that frames the discussions. So imagine a picture frame, and what's inside the picture frame, those are the things that will be discussed. Basically, again, the framework agreement outlines procedures for conducting negotiations, because it is, it will be the first official negotiating stage. And it would, um, how the topics will be discussed, and what topics will be negotiated in the future. So, picture inside of a frame, negotiations that are inside of the framework agreement, how they will be discussed, how things will be concluded, how they would be agreed to. These are the things that uh, the framework agreement does. This is what the framework agreement does. So what comes, what follows a framework agreement? In the uh, standard comprehensive claim process that we're in, a next uh, possible step that, not, that hasn't been agreed to would be an agreement in principle. Uh, following that, again, a final agreement uh, and a treaty. Again, these things haven't been agreed to. So the frame agreement is, though, we are at the beginning stages of negotiations. It's still a large number, a many number of years uh, in the future to go in terms of having negotiations. Uh, it's hard to say exactly uh, how many years. Uh, I don't think anyone's in a position now to say uh, this number of years. But again, uh, we just want to reiterate, it's at the opening stages of negotiations. The negotiations will just be beginning. The, the MMS will just be undertaking uh, negotiations and uh, the communities will be uh, in a position now to uh, start uh, thinking about how they want to see their government for, uh, be structured in the future. And uh, another step possible that we might take is sign interim agreements where we might be able to start accessing the resources, having agreements where they, we can have additional resources um, and, and things like that. So really it's at the opening stages and I don't want to leave you with, the, uh, with a sense that uh, it's concluded, the work is done, we have a framework agreement and we're all set. I think it's more of a matter to say, okay, we have a framework agreement, now we're at the beginning, now we're at the place where we're going to start negotiating and we could start seeing the future. So. Uh, let's all try to get out there in these uh, coming months to learn more about the Framework Agreement, uh, provide your information. Uh, the key thing that I want to say again though is your questions. What questions do you have? Uh, you should bring those questions forward. Try to get clarifications, try to get answers. That's very critical. That's very important that you understand this Framework Agreement. For the community members, uh, or sorry, the chiefs and uh, the leadership to be able to go forward and sign this uh, agreement. It would be nice for them to say, yes, my community members have had every opportunity to uh, sit in front of people, uh, to hear about the, uh, you know, all the different aspects of the, uh, the framework agreement, that they had chance to pose questions uh, on the, uh, the draft agreement, which I guess would be somewhat close to uh, being the final agreement. And I think that uh, they can say, yes, my community is comfortable moving forward. It was uh, a long way uh, since they signed the NI, it seems, uh, the thinking before the decision. So the uh, decision was to go forward in the comprehensive claim process. And we're at the stage right now where we're ready to go. So uh, I look forward to seeing you there. And uh, I'm always available. If you have any questions, uh, come up and approach me and ask me. And again, I invite you to come to our website, www.migmaway.ca. And uh, framework agreement, the draft will be up there very shortly. So thank you very much. Walalin.